Welcome everybody to the String Fino seminar series. So our first speaker today is Sebastian Rauch um, from Amherst, and he will tell us about symmetry structures and n equals to three S folds, please. All right, uh, well, I'd like to start by thanking the organizers for inviting me to give this talk, as well as thank the organizers for having me talk after last week, uh, because the talks last week nicely set up a lot of the kind of techniques and setting that I'll be working in. Uh, so this is work based on my recent paper with uh, Ben and Inyaki, as well as another of Ben's students, mm -hmm. Maltro. Um, and a lot of these results are also independently um, found in this other work uh, that came out just like a week after ours. Uh, so the, the organization here is I'll start with a review of S folds um, and then introduce the concept of brains as symmetry operators. So this is a, an ADS CFT uh, correspondence. Um, then I will compute commutation relations for these brains as a way of understanding what the actual groups involved uh, for the symmetries are. Um, and then we can check these results in the n equals four s folds, which are dual to the uh, n equals four super Yang Mills theories with gauge algebras in the B, C, and D families. Um, and then finally, we can, can talk about our results in n equals three. All right. So first, to explain what s folds are, um, and essentially s folds are a non-perturbative generalization of an orientifold. And the idea is that instead of, so, so to, to generalize an orientifold, instead of thinking um, of an orientifold, as a Z2 orbifold um, paired with the action of world sheet parity omega, um, we can instead recognize that omega really acts as, sorry, minus one in the 2B self-duality group. And so in this way, uh, we can um, we can associate an orientifold with um, just like a purely spatial Z2 quotient um, of F theory. Right, so we have kind of the usual Z2 orbifold on the physical space time, as well as this Z2 action given by minus one in SL2Z uh, acting on the F theory torus. So now the idea is that we generalize this um, by uh, taking Z2 to be some other uh, cyclic group ZK. Um, so We generalize by taking a ZK orbifold of space time paired with a ZK action of SL2Z. Um, so in this case, the ZK action is given by uh, is generated by something I'm going to call rho k. Um, and in particular, this being a zk action means that rho k to the k is, of course, 1. Uh, something uh, worth noting is that um, In the case of Z2, minus one, of course, acts on the axial dilaton 
trivially, and it's in a projective representation of SL2. Um, and so in this sense, oriental folds are a perturbative object because I'm allowed to take um, arbitrarily weak coupling. Um, but in the case of these higher k, rho k will act non-trivially on tau and will actually fix us to some sort of strong coupling. OK, so the case of interest for this work um, is when space-time is of the form of a product. So I have this four-dimensional factor times the six-dimensional factor, which I'm going to take uh, to be C3 for convenience. Um, now I can easily describe the ZK action, which is just going to be a complex rotation on C3. So if ZI are my coordinates on the C3, then ZI is sent to e to the 2 pi i by k zi. Uh, so we note that this orbifold is going to take c3 to be a cone over s5 mod zk, um, which means that topologically, the quotient is given by n10, given by the, we don't touch the m4 factor, then we have this uh, radial direction, r uh, positive, and then this s5 mod zk factor. Um, so in the usual, like, orientifold picture, this m4 times our positive will get assembled into something that looks like, say, ADS5 in the case of um, like the, uh, the usual ADS-CFT correspondence on an oriental fold. Um, and so in particular, we notice that the origin of the C3, which corresponds to 0 in R greater, is the, is the fixed point of this quotient. And so that's kind of the, the generalization of the O plane. Um, OK, so then. Additionally, with this, we have this action of rho k on the f theory torus. And so the idea is that when we carry a state around a cycle um, in this s5 mod zk, we will act on the state by rho k. Um, so the kind of cartoon picture here, if I, instead of having c3, I just have c. So I have the unit circle in c. Um, then I can consider what happens under, say, a Z3 quotient. So here I'm identifying points related by this 2 pi by 3 rotation. And as well, I have the you know, complex structure tau for the torus, which is being mapped non-trivially by the action of, uh, of rho k. And so the idea is that under this quotient, of course, in this case, uh, S1 mod ZK is just S1, so that's slightly misleading. Um, but importantly, we do see that the uh, complex structure is actually pinned to a fixed point of this rho K action. Um, so in the M theory lift of this F theory construction, um, the value, we can see explicitly that the values of k are fixed so that the gluing procedure that we're implementing is smooth. Um, so we have that k has to be 1, 2, 3, 4, or 6. So k equals 1 uh, corresponds to not doing anything. k equals 2 is a usual orientifold. And then 3, 4, and 6 are these non-perturbative generalizations. We can be explicit about the form uh, of these actions in SL2Z.
And so kind of the important feature that we're seeing here is that for k greater than two, these rows uh, inherently contain s uh, in their decomposition. And so they're they're really these like non-perturbative actions. Um, so this is where you know row k dot tau uh, equals tau only for specific fixed points of of this action. Uh, where here I'm kind of I'm being a little bit uncareful about which fundamental domain I'm I'm placing tau and I might have to, to shift it by one. Um, good. And so we see here that in particular, right, the imaginary component of tau is of order one. So it is neither uh, weakly coupled nor dual to a weakly coupled theory. Um, the last important thing to note um, is that exactly because of this row K action, when we talk about physical states, we have to be working explicitly with SL2Z uh, representations. We can't work with components of them. Um, so we work with, say, you know, the D3 is an SL2Z singlet, so it makes sense to work with. Likewise, we can work with the doublet F1, D1, or say NS5, D5, but we can't work with, say, F1 separately from D1, uh, because as I take F, F1 around a closed cycle in the S5 and back to the original spot, I don't get the F1 back. I get some bound state of F1s and D1s. OK, so this is my review of S folds. So I'll ask if there are any questions. OK, so now. Um, the idea of our setting here is to study the dynamics of a stack of D3 brains coincident with this, uh, with the fixed point of the ZK action. Um, and what we'll find is that this is dual to an N equals three uh, SCFT. Um, and so we'll, we will analyze the symmetries of this using the ADS CFT correspondence uh, because we'll have this. Uh, ADS5 times S5 mod ZK type geometry. Um, so for the, the large rank limit, this makes sense. So next, I will introduce brains as operators, or as symmetry operators, I should say. Because in order to do this computation in the on the bulk side of this ADS CFT correspondence, I have to know what the dual of my symmetry operators are, um, and so the 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 dual that we're going to take will be the uh, the brains asymptotically pushed onto the boundary. Um, so the idea is that um, kind of recently by some some work from Inyaki and uh, Sakura. And, and others, we have this kind of well-motivated notion of, of these brains as symmetry operators. So the, the first clue as to why we should think of brains as symmetry operators um, is that, um, so a brain uh, parallel to the boundary of this space-time, boundary of, of M5, um, becomes topological as it's pushed to the boundary. Um, and this is essentially because as we push the brain uh, to the boundary, we are uh, running RG on the local brain dynamics into the UV. So we go into this asymptotic freedom. Uh, Good. And so, so we end up, we trivialize the, the brain dynamics. And so it becomes a, a topological object in string theory. Um, the next point is that, of course, 
So, okay, so I can summarize this as, you know, a brain which lies along the boundary is topological. So I'm going to draw that as a straight line because it doesn't have these dynamics. Whereas if I have a brain whose boundary is along the, uh, the boundary of space-time, but it extends into the bulk, then actually this boundary remains dynamical. Uh, so you basically, you don't have this kind of RG flow. Um, and so the, the boundary of a, of a brain asymptotically pushed to the boundary will actually be dual to a dynamical operator in the CFT instead of a topological operator. Um, the next clue is that, of course, brains measure the charge of other brains. So in the kind of usual field theory picture, you have a brain linking another brain, giving you back, or sorry, the uh, topological operator wrapping a dynamical operator gives you back the dynamical operator times some measurement of the charge. And we get the same kind of result for, for brain fusions and brain linkings. Um, and so this is kind of another clue that, that these brains are going to be related to the symmetry operators on the boundary. Um, good. So, you know, putting this together, we have that, that brains have the appropriate kind of linking behavior of symmetry operators and um, become topological. So it, it really makes sense to, to view them as dual to symmetry operators in the QFT. Uh, so that's that's the motivation for considering this. Um, so at this point, we have translated our problem uh, from computing the symmetries of some non-Lagrangian SCFT into uh, understanding what brains we have and how they link. Um, so we we really have a, a very explicit uh, problem to to solve now. So to solve this problem, um, we basically need to compute both what brains are allowed and how they link. And so this is at least in part controlled by the commutation relations of the brains. The commutation relations don't tell me um, which brains are, are allowed in my theory. Um, but this is an important piece of it. Um, so the idea for pulling these, uh, computing these commutation relations is going to be uh, following the work from 2006 of Friedmore and Siegel uh, for kind of the non-commutativity of fluxes. So the idea is to, I'm, I'm gonna run through kind of a, a toy example of this with generalized Maxwell theory as a model for like uh, D1, D5 brain linking. And then I'll kind of talk about how to, how to move to the, the more realistic scenario. So if I start with generalized Maxwell, so I have CK is a K connection on a U1 K bundle. So um, basically just the, the usual C terms in like the type two wheat uh, sugra action. Um, then from this, uh, we can compute say the, the charge of a, a given region contained in a region of space-time, of course, in the usual Gauss's law way. All right, so we, we integrate the, the flux of the electric field through a surface to find the charge, um, which if we want, we can write this in uh, a, slightly different way where instead of making the, the variable for this uh, operator a surface, we can make it actually a K form, which is the Poincaré dual to that surface, um, which if you're being careful about dimension counting, you see that I've switched from a D dimensional space to a D minus one dimensional space. And this is because we're doing canonical quantization. So we have this uh, foliation along a time parameter. Uh, 
Uh, and so this var sigma k is the Poincare dual of sigma d minus k minus one in this m d minus one. So then we can produce the symmetry operator associated to this k form, which is of course what we'd expect. Let's take the exponential of the charge operator. Um, but now we have the question of how does this uh, operator act on states? So recognizing that um, the Hilbert space of our theory uh, is, is generated by, if you want, what I'm going to write is, is a basis for our Hilbert space. Uh, is generated by this Cheeger Simons cohomology uh, of our manifold. So this is classifying the uh, both the curvature of a connection and the kind of like discrete holonomies that it can carry. Um, so this is kind of all of the gauge invariant information in. Uh, so this is. all gauge invariant info about you know, fk plus one, which is some uh, generalization of, of DCK. Um, so this means I can write states like this. This is my basis. And so then kind of the final step here is to recognize that CK is canonically conjugate to star DCK uh, because of how just derivative counting in the action. And so we can then directly compute that the action of this symmetry operator on this basis is uh, given by translation. where this iota map is the inclusion of uh, k-forms as flat uh, connections into the, the k plus one cohomology. Um, so this is exactly the usual um, like exponential of p dot l on a position state uh, gives just translation. So Right, it's the, the same uh, exact conical uh, uh, quantization kind of relationship. And so then this lets us compute the commutation relation of uh, these symmetry operators with a, another operator, which is basically the magnetic charge operator. in the usual way. And we see that this uh, is going to pick up this purely topological term which is essentially the linking pairing um, of the uh, of the two surfaces that we have. So the the surface that the electric charge operator is defined on and that the magnetic uh, charge operator is defined on. So we see this here, that this is basically the, the linking between psi and sigma. Um, so what we have is that in the uh, commutation relations are given entirely by uh, this topological information. So to generalize this to the setting at hand, uh, we have to uh, take into account both uh, the churn simons term in the Sugra action, as well as um, the West zumino witten terms in the uh, D-brain actions. Um, putting this all together um, allows us to, to compute all these commutation relations. Um, importantly, um, in, 
in these settings, this will allow us to effectively uh, compute kind of like what the largest possible symmetry groups are. Uh, and so in explicit examples with a given global structure, we will have to you know, take certain polarizations of these symmetry groups and as well, uh, non-invertibility and uh, kind of like higher group type information is harder to diagnose in this setting. It requires a more careful analysis. So you have um, three more minutes. Three minutes. OK, so let me just kind of rapid fire talk about the results here. Um, you can explicitly check this in the case of the uh, orientifold. So this gives you back the Arone Cyborg Tachikawa classification of, of N equals four super Yang mills. Um, and we exactly reproduce the collection of theories. Um, and as well, the you can see the SL2Z duality web uh, matches between the string, string theoretic side and the uh, field theory side. So passing to the, the more exciting results in n equals three. Um, now the classifications are happening not in kind of regular cohomology, but cohomology with this SL2Z um, module coefficients to keep track of how everything's transforming. And what you end up finding is that everything is controlled by this operator CK. Or sorry, this, this module CK, which is given as such. So we see that it's just this nice small uh, group. We see that K equals two is interesting uh, because the, the doublets actually split into their components. That's what the Z2 plus Z2 is telling us. And then otherwise, uh, we just have that these are these nice cyclic groups. Um, and so then with this information, we can compute the pairing between um, string type objects and reduced five brain objects. So these are five brains reduced over cycles of the S5 mod ZK so that they are um, also strings in the bulk. In this way, we're computing one form symmetries. Um, so we can compute this linking to be basically a CK symmetry. Um, and similarly, you can compute the uh, like wrapped three brain interactions, which will give you the zero form and two form symmetries. And that will be a, a ZK symmetry. So the, the one form symmetry is a little bit larger than, or sorry, the zero form symmetry is a little bit larger than the one form symmetry. Um, and then of course, in this case, there are no string string uh, commutation relations or five brain five brain commutation relations because you can't split the doublets. And so from kind of this commutation relation, we can read off also the number of, of global structures. And so we see that for K equals three and four, uh, because the string and five brain don't commute, we end up with three theories, which correspond to either having a lone string, a lone five brain, or a bound state. And then in the case of the k equals six theory, there's actually only the one theory uh, because the, the string and the five brain commute with each other. Um, and so then there's a little bit of outlook on this. Um, an interesting question is that the choice of gauge algebra in the k equals two case is associated to choices of discrete torsion in this uh, quotient. Um, and so it's interesting to ask what role discrete torsion plays in the higher k case, because um, it may shield, uh, you know, it, it may block some of the five brain wrappings. Um, as well, uh, it's it's interesting to, to ask what the actual full symmetry category is, uh, which again requires some more uh, careful understanding of how the brain fusions work. Um, and then also there are in the n equals four case still, there are some subtleties in exactly how one matches the duality orbits. Um, and so the, you can read some, some notes at the end of our paper if you want details on that. Okay.
then uh, let's thank Sebastian. And we have time for a quick question. Maybe I'll, I'll start off. So one you already answered for the discrete torsion part, uh, uh, I was interested whether this uh, can be included. And the other one is um, there are also setups where I include additional seven brains that now stretch essentially to the boundary. So they would introduce some sort of flavor symmetry, break the supersymmetry further down. But usually those setups tend to have a, a more diverse uh, uh, Categorical symmetry. Can can you say something maybe along those lines? Yeah. So so first of all, uh, with discrete torsion, um, we we restricted our, ourselves to the case where we turned off all the discrete torsion uh, for simplicity. Uh, although, apart from being a, a slightly hairy algebraic topology computation, there shouldn't actually be any obstruction to including it. Um, for including the seven brains, yeah. So that. That takes us to the n equals two s folds, uh, which again I think Sakura has a paper on those. Um, those we are we're very interested in kind of running this technique on those. Um, there, it's not clear that the quotient of the s five is uh, fixed point free, and so it's not entirely clear how that's going to uh, impact some of the the computations. Um, so it's, it's something that we're, we're definitely interested in, and we have some ideas on, on where to go with that, but, but at the moment, that's somewhat speculative. Okay, thank you. Another quick question, maybe. 